I don't think anyone gives us more hope in his columns, in his TV appearances and his speeches than Owen Jones, and I'm so glad he's here. Owen, thank you. <laughs> Friends. Friends, you always know the stakes are high where you can fill a room on a Saturday morning for a political rally. And the stakes, the stakes are high. I hope you're all feeling a bit less bleary-eyed than myself. But it is, it's an honour to be here. It's an honour to be here. And this is such an important moment. Potentially a historic moment. But events like this don't come together without a lot of effort. And there's been so much effort put behind the scenes. So please give a big round of applause for the people who put this event together. Now, friends, the reason this is such an important moment is this. So far, this whole referendum debate has been a political wasteland. It has been a fight between two political factions. One faction believes in privatisation, in, uh, in cutting our public services, uh, on uh, handing over our assets to the wealthy, and the other on the other hand, supports privatisation, cuts, <laughs> policies that favour the rich with added xenophobia and bashing of migrants. That is not a battle in which we have a dog. And this today is the beginning of a new voice, a new movement, a movement based on hope, on building a new Europe, a democratic Europe, a Europe run in the interests of the majority. And it is absolutely up to every single person in this room to make that movement happen in the coming weeks. Now friends, let's think about what's at stake. Let's think about what's at stake. Think about basic workers' rights, which are currently guaranteed as part of EU membership, like paid annual leave, like rights for part-time workers. And the whole point of having these rights across the European Union is to prevent a race to the bottom. There you have basic rights so countries can't compete with each other on undercutting rights for working people. What do you think will happen to those rights that some of you in this room depend on and people watching? They will burn on a bonfire and that bonfire will be lit by our new Conservative Prime Minister Boris Johnson. We can't allow that to happen and we won't allow that to happen. I don't know if you're booing Boris Johnson or me, it's very disconcerting. <laughs> and friends, we, we cannot allow those bases we have fought for for generations to disappear, which is exactly what will happen if we leave the European Union under this Conservative government. Now friends, it's the same with tax justice, and it's the same with climate change. Across Europe, people have been campaigning for years, for decades, and that struggle has paid off. No, we haven't won the sorts of uh, concessions that all of us probably in this room want. But we have forced change on our leaderships. Take, for example, the issue of tax justice. We all saw a few weeks ago those revelations, I'm not sure they were revelations, the Panama Papers are ritually across the world preaching the need for cuts while stashing their fortunes in tax havens in order to deprive the authorities of the taxes they should be paying. Now, friends... Because of people campaigning, including in this country, the campaigners, for example, of UK Uncut, the issue of tax justice has been forced on the agenda. And in the aftermath of those revelations, because of people campaigning and struggling and protesting, they forced action from people, leaders across the European Union. Not far enough, no, but something. And that only happens, not one country at a time, but when all countries across European down on the crime of tax avoidance. The same with climate change, an existential threat to our humanity. And it is only again through people campaigning and protesting that we've won elections by 2030. We can't solve these problems one country at a time. It's only by fighting across Europe that we can overcome these challenges. Now, people say, and I've had this thrown at me, and you'll all have these arguments thrown at you in the next few weeks. They'll say this, because none of us here, I presume, are pretending the European Union we have at the moment is the one we want. We want to change the European Union. That's what this is all about. But friends, they say that winning that change is naive, is utopian, it's a deception. 
But in doing so, in making that case, they do down the ability of people across Europe to come together and collectively organise to win change. And we've already seen... We've already seen that change happen. Take the transatlantic trade investment partnership that gives those corporations the ability to sue elected governments, as Caroline says. Because people campaigned from Warsaw to Madrid, from Berlin to London, TTIP as things stands lies in rubble. And that is only because people have been campaigning and protesting to make it happen. And Renz, we hear... We hear some right-wing Brexiteers and they talk about the EU's threats to British traditions and British values. Well, let's talk about two proud British institutions, like the National Health Service and the BBC. Who is undermining and attacking those institutions? It's not the European Union. It's our own government. They're the ones who have imposed the longest squeeze on NHS funding since it was founded. They're the ones privatising and marketising our NHS. They're the ones undermining our great institutions. Now, now, for some inexplicable reason, there are some who want to let the Tories off the hook for what they're doing to this country and displacing responsibility. But it wasn't the European Union who privatised our railways. It wasn't the European Union who repealed our hard-won workers' rights. It wasn't the European Union who implemented massive cuts. That's our own government here in London. They're the ones responsible, above all, for these injustices. And just to finish off, because this is absolutely critical, and it is the nature of the Leave campaign. Now, we are used to campaigns of fear. We've had all too many of them in the last few years. And we had one very recently in London. Zach Goldsmith attempted to win in London by stirring up fear and Islamophobia and prejudice and racism. And the people of London turned round and told him where to stick his xenophobia. That's what they did. Now, we said no to bigotry. We said no to bigotry. And a desperate Leave campaign is now trying to stir up prejudice, betraying people from different countries as murderers, as rapists, as criminals, as Turkish criminals are going to swamp us and all the rest. What will happen if Britain leaves? It will be seen as a vindication of that campaign. A Tory right will be seen triumphant. They will come to power under Boris Johnson and they will say, see that their uh, whole campaign of xenophobia has been uh, vindicated. Those workers' rights will go. The cuts will continue, almost certainly accelerated. It doesn't have to be this way. We can unite with people across this continent. All over Europe, people are campaigning and protesting and trying to change their own countries and Europe as a whole. It is up to us to stand with them not to turn away. It won't be easy, it will be hard, but change never is easy. And the way we get change is not the goodwill and generosity of the powerful, but it is the struggle and sacrifice of people from below. So let's stand with people across Europe, let's have hope, and let's build a new democratic Europe running the interests of the majority. Let's do it.